chapter called Al-Fatiha, which means the opener. As it opens the Quran, it is sometimes also able to open people's heart. Surah Al-Fatiha, or the opening, is the first chapter of the Quran. Its verses are a prayer for God's guidance and stress the Lordship and mercy of God or Allah in Arabic. The opening lines of Quran In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the universe, the most gracious, the most merciful, owner of the day of judgment. You alone do we worship, and you alone we turn to for help. Guide us to the straight path. The path of those on whom you have bestowed your grace, not are the way of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. These verses of the Quran are a prayer that forms a core of the obligatory and non-obligatory formal prayers of all Muslims. They recite it and reflection it at least 17 times a day. It sets the state of the mind, heart, and soul at the beginning of each prayer and therefore sets the outlook on the day. And hence, indicates the whole perspective on life of a Muslim. It contains in a few short verses all the basic principles of Islam. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, One of his followers said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, When you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, also known as the Our Father, contains seven petitions. The number seven often connotes completion or perfection in Scripture. The Lord's Prayer is just a complete and perfect summary of divine teachings. The Lord's Prayer focuses our thoughts on what's important in life by summarizing all that we must do to be good and faithful servants. The Lord's Prayer addresses many of the essentials of our Christians' lives, including our relationship with God, our relationship with one another, and with people around us in the world. So when a group of believers wholeheartedly praise this prayer in unison, it is very unifying experience. It brings to life the essence of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, how... Here are the five fundamental positions of arms and feet in folk dancing. First position. Arms are raised forward, forming a circle in front of the chest with fingertips of both hands about an inch apart. Second position. The arms are placed sideward a little below shoulder level with palms facing up. Third position. The right arm is raised above the head, forming a half circle, while the left arm remains in the second position. Fourth position. The right arm is still raised and remains in an amplified position, while the left arm is placed in front of the chest as in the first position. Fifth position. 
Both arms are raised, forming a circle over the head in an amplified position. First position. Both heels are together while toes are apart at an angle of about 45 degrees or more. Position. Both feet apart sideward about the pace distance. Heels are parallel to each other. Third position. The right heel of one foot is close to instep of the left foot. Fourth position. The right foot is forward about the pace distance with toes out. Fifth position. The right foot is placed in front of the left foot while the right heel is close to the toes of the left foot. So now, we are done with the five fundamentals of both arms and feet. Let's combine it together. First position. Second position. Third position. Fourth position. And fifth position. And down. I am a member of Christianity. And I know that God is always there for us through our ups and downs, especially today that we are facing a problem that is rapidly spreading the world and many people are suffering with this pandemic. And I know that God is always there to guide us to this problem we are struggling with. Before I start this role play, I have a quick interview of how does religion influence their family, especially today that we are suffering. Religions influences many people to have respect to each other, whether they are have different religions in their life. One of the influence of religion to our family is reading a Bible together. The Old Testament contains 613 commands given by God for whose people to follow. The Ten Commandments, also known as the Decalogue or Moral Laws. The Ten Commandments were given by God to Moses to be followed by the nation of Israel. So now, let's proceed to the Ten Commandments. Commandment number one, You shall have no other gods before me, meaning worship the one true God only. Commandment number two, You shall not make for yourself a carved image. This means don't worship or bow down to anything in place of God. Commandment number three. You shall not have the name of the Lord your God in vain. This means do not use God's name disrespectfully. Commandment number four. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This means Rest from work on the seventh day of the week and remember what God has done. Commandment number five, honor your father and mother. This means respect the authority and role of our parents. Commandment number six, you shall not murder. This means do not take the life of another unlawfully. Commandment number seven, 
you shall not commit adultery. This means keep the marriage relationship sacred and free from infidelity. Commandment number 8. You shall not steal. This means do not take what is not rightfully belong to you. Commandment number 9. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. This means a full justice in trial and only report the truth. Commandment number 10. You shall not covet. This means do not allow your heart to long for and crave what is not yours. The next video are the Jewish belief in one God. Jews believe that there is a single God who not only created the universe but with whom every Jew can have an individual and personal relationship. They believe that God continues to work in the world affecting everything that people do. Jews believe that God appointed the Jews to be his chosen people in order to set an example of holiness and ethical belief in the world. Jews believe that there is only one God. Jews believe that God sometimes speaks to individuals but in unexpected ways. Jews believe that God can subdivide it into different persons. So that's the end of this video.